Hello everyone, welcome for something a little different, the beginner's guide. I don't know anything about this game other than the fact that one, it was really cheap on a Black Friday sale and two, it's somehow related to like, not the Stanley Parable game, but I think it had like the same developers or somehow was involved in some crisscross or whatever. I don't really know. I believe it's about an hour and a half, two hours long. So we're gonna try to make it just one video and I hope it's a good time. If you wouldn't mind doing me a huge favor though and smacking that like button, we're gonna get right into it. Begin the game. Please make sure your audio is on. Yeah. It's on. I love that sound, the, like the crackling fire and stuff. Uh, okay. Hi there. Thank you very much for playing The Beginner's Guide. Oh. My name is Davey Reedon. I wrote The Stanley Parable. Ah. And while that game tells a pretty absurd story, today I'm going to tell you about a series of events that happened between 2008 and 2011. Oh, wow. We're going to look at the games made by a friend of mine named Coda. Now, these games mean a lot to me. Uh, I met Coda in early 2009 at a time when I was really struggling with some personal stuff, and his work pointed me in a very powerful direction. I found it to be a good reference point for the kinds of creative works that I wanted to make. So just to start you off, this is, I think, the first game he ever made. It's a level for Counter-Strike. You can walk around here, by the way. And oh, uh, uh, mostly it's just Coda learning the basics of building a 3D environment. But what I like is that even though he starts from the simple aesthetic of a desert town, he then scatters these colorful abstract blobs and impossible floating crates around the level. Oh, of yeah. course, it destroys the illusion that this actually is a desert town, and instead this level becomes a kind of calling card from its creator. It's like a reminder that this video game was constructed by a real person. And it kind of makes you wonder, <laughs> what was going through his head as he was building this? This is what I like about all of Coda's games. I mean, not that they're all fascinating as games, but that they are all going to give us access to their creator. I want us to see past the games themselves. I want to get oh, to wow. know who this human being really is. And that's exactly what we're going to do here. Oh, fun. So. It's this 2008, Coda starts making these games, and he never releases any of them. He doesn't put them onto the internet, he just makes them and then immediately abandons them and they sit on his computer forever. And I think he really understood this image of himself as a recluse. Uh, at one point he jokingly renamed his computer's recycling bin to Important Games Folder. <laughs> so, you know, this was just how he worked. He tended to crank them out one after the other without even really pausing to try to understand what he had just made. Until suddenly one day, he just stopped. In 2011, that was it. He made his last game and then he hasn't made another one since. And that's why I've taken this opportunity to gather all of his work together. is because I find his games powerful and interesting, and I'd like this collection to reach him, to maybe encourage him to start creating again. Oh, wow. And if the people like you who play this also happen to find his work interesting, then I'm sure it'll just send that much stronger of a message of encouragement to Coda. So thanks for joining me on this. If you have a particular interpretation that I haven't mentioned here, or if you just need to get in touch, you can email me at d-a-v-e-y-w-r-e-d-e-n at gmail.com. Okay, that's about it for introduction. Let's take a look at Coda's first proper game. As each game is loading, I'll show you the date that it was completed. This first one was made in November 2008. This is wild. It's like a collage. It, it, it's it, If it plays out the way it sounds, this is almost going to be like a collage of somebody's experimental games or their learning process of making games. How fascinating. I have never heard of such a thing. Yo. Whisper machine status active. This game Evac is called Escape from Whisper. And it's one of the more generic games you'll see from Coda. Okay. Oh my goodness. Who is Coda? Did he ever come back to make more games? I'm, I'm already wondering. Did this give him the inspiration needed? Oh, check it out. It's all collapsed. I like how the, the gun kind of sways a little bit. It's got that old fashioned doom feel to it. Very nice, very nice. 
Security call breached. Hostile alien life form inbound. Uh oh. Hostile alien. It kind of looks like this game was abandoned mid development. For instance, you have this gun, which you'd think would indicate that there are supposed to be monsters or enemies somewhere, right. but then clearly there are no enemies anywhere. You can't even reload the gun when you run out of bullets. I'd already tried. But ultimately, we don't really know. Maybe Coda thought that actually it was complete the way that it is. And I think that we should talk about his games for what they are, rather than for what they're not. Okay. Enemy force neutralized. Oh. Begin this is so fascinating. I love how you can see the bottom of the universe from this room. Yo, that looks so good. It's like this narrator is actually on this ride with us. This is so fascinating. Okay, does this one open? Nope, okay. Yo, it looks nice. The the textures and stuff that were used here. That's pretty cool. Oh, that Apparently the space station has a labyrinth on it. What? I, uh, sure, I don't know. There's really no reason for it that I've ever been able to discern, so in the interest of time, I'm just going to skip you on past it. <laughs> that was great. Okay, this is the part that's interesting. The game has this narrative about the whisper machine and how it has to be turned off, and then you get to the engine room. Hey, okay. you there, in the engine room. You could save us all. That beam is powering the whisper machine. We could disrupt it by introducing a great enough heat signature. If you... Your body could stop the beam. It's so much to ask, but for all of our lives, would you do it? Oh, wow. Would you give yourself? Heck yeah. Let me pause here for a second. What you just experienced, stepping into the beam and then dying, is probably what Coda had initially intended when he was developing this level. But when he first compiles and plays it, something goes wrong. There's a bug somewhere. And this is what happens instead. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh my goodness. The beam causes you to start floating. And this is an important moment for him. Because yes, this is technically a glitch, but Coda identifies something human about it. Like how small it makes you feel in the face of this larger chaotic system. Or this right. floating could be the afterlife, a peaceful place juxtaposed against all of the hysteria that you've just had to traverse. I, I don't even know. Uh, I have no idea what he was thinking. But what's clear is that after making this, something lodges itself in his brain. He wants to do more of these really weird and experimental designs. So he stops okay. work on this and moves on to a stream of tiny little games that go in all sorts of directions. Let's go ahead and take a look at the first game he made after leaving this one behind. That's so wild. You know, it's like the past was behind her. It's like this is the side of development that you don't really get to see. When we see the finished product that comes out of our games that we play, you know, it's it's very rare that we get to see the thought process so try that went into backwards. getting getting all the way to that point. That is so amazing. Walk backwards? Yep. In this game, you can only walk backwards. Oh, whoa. Uh... I hadn't even tried moving yet. I didn't I didn't really realize that. Yo. You can like see through the floor. Oh. <laughs> I have never played a game where you could only walk backwards. Thank goodness. This would drive me nuts. So it's a but short and relatively minimalist experiment combining motion and narrative. It is okay. less advanced than the previous game, but actually it seems to be more focused, more complete. Code is trying to give it a unique voice rather than simply basing it on a pre-existing trope. When she stops and looks, it becomes clearer. Okay. But if the future is always behind her, I guess that if you're walking backwards and that's your future, that's where you go. I get what they're saying there. How will she find the strength 
to confront it. It's a short little thought, it says what it wants to say, and then it ends. Didn't need anything more than that. Which, to me, is why it works. Because it gets out quick. Okay, next one. Oh, I like the feel of this one already. Creepy. Oh, look at that. The light only goes out. Okay. You are now entering... What's the back of it say? Okay. Knowing this guy, there could be something on the back side of that sign. Can I jump? Oh. And that's it. Okay, the meaning of this game won't be clear just yet. Please be patient with me for a few more games, and I promise you'll see what makes it interesting. I'm already fascinated. December 2008. Nonsense Oftentimes, Kuda would put every bizarre country. titles like this one at the start of his games. Yo. I wish I'd known him at the time that he was making these early games. He would really only talk to me about his work as he was making it. Once he stopped work on a game, like, that was it. It was dead to him. And I don't agree with that at all, but what are you going to do? He almost made a made it sound like he continued to make games, so I'm hoping he did. It's it's really cool to I know it's like, tempting, but there's actually nothing over here. Sorry. <laughs> the fact that it knew I was going to look, that's fantastic. Okay, stairway of heaven, baby. Let's see what happens here. All right, he said, the other game will make sense in time. Am I slowing down? Once you've been slowed to an absolute crawl, the door at the top of the stairs opens. So why, if Code is not showing these games to anyone, why bother opening the door at all? Well, to show you, I'm modifying the game here so that when you press enter, it'll bring you back up to full speed so you can enter the door for yourself. Oh, wow. This is so cool. Uh, you, uh, what? I can't read all those. You start in a small room until you realize you just can't walk through the walls. The game is nothing but giant blocks of A room text. that's warm and nice and filled with little ideas for games. Oh, wow. A normal game where you have to scream into a mic every 15 seconds to keep playing? Oh my goodness. Coda would often tell me that he didn't mind if people thought of him as cold or distant. He said that he knew that he was actually a vibrant and compassionate person, but that oh, yeah. it takes time to really see that. It can be a very slow climb to get there. You know, a stranger appears. You must address and rally a group of eager press reporters. January 2009, okay. Ready, set, fish. I can see why the Stanley Parable team latched onto this guy, because it's like he thinks the way they do. In the unexpected. Oh, wow. All right, well, I'll just keep going for it. I like that he was like able to modify that game too so we could like get inside there. Well, this is new for Coda. It's an actual puzzle. Is Go it? ahead and see if you can solve it. Uh, I mean, there's not really much to solve here, unless I can't get across that. Okay. Is there a handle out here somewhere? Can I pull it from inside? Aha! Ah, ha, look at that! Don't forget that solution, because we're going to see this puzzle again soon. We're going to see it a lot. <laughs> Good to know. All right. Oh. Is this what he meant by see it a lot? Literally in this same game? Now, did Coda actually make this music or have they added that? That's another so that thing I'm kind of wondering. To be it, right? You walk down a corridor, you solve the puzzle, you get to the end. Simple enough. All right, 
Now I'm going to modify the game again so that when you press enter, it'll remove all of the walls from this room. Okay. What? No way. This is... How about that? There was more to it than we had any way of knowing. I actually find it funny that this game comes after the stairs game since they essentially convey the opposite idea. So, uh, in the stairs game, a dull exterior concealed a rich interior. And then, in this level, a dull interior hides this fantastic outer world. Wow. Either way, I think that the point is the same. Is that most of the time, you don't get to know what you're missing. Or even that you're missing anything. That's not your role as a player. Mm. So if your role here is not to understand, then what is it? Wow. Okay. I'm gonna go a little further with this one, it looks like. You are now exiting. Aha. Uh -huh. So this, combined with the entering game from earlier, tells us that Coda believes his games are connected somehow. It could even be that the stairs game and the puzzle game are literally connected in between this and the entering game. There's a bigger picture that all of his games are meant to play a role in, some larger meaning that we won't be able to grasp until we've seen all of them. And once we have, we can step back and start to understand what exactly that bigger picture is. Okay. Mark, so it's been two months. The Great and Lovely Descent. Yo! That looks awesome! Listen to the echo of the footsteps. Let's talk about video game development for a second. Yes, please Every do. video game runs on what's called an engine, which determines what the game can and cannot do. So in other words, the engine is a set of tools for game development. Okay. To make uh, all of these games, Coda is using an engine called Source. Like all engines, Source has certain things that it does well, and it has certain things that it does poorly. One of the things that it does very well is boxy linear corridors. That's why so many of Coda's games are set in these large, flat, empty rooms, is just because he's working with what the engine does well. Okay, that makes sense. The tools available to the creator shape what kinds of creative work they're going to end up making. You might consider paying attention to the architecture in Coda's games, to notice how they seem to stem from an engine that's very good at producing linear, boxy corridors. Okay. Noted. Oh, I slipped. Oh. Oh, wow. Okay. Maybe I didn't slip. Maybe I was literally pushed off. It almost looks like I can get... No, I can't get around this little glass or whatever this is. Okay. Yo, that's kind of weird looking. Like, creepy. I feel like I'm a cattle. Oh. Oh my goodness. All right, um, can I get, oh, no, I'm going up here. This prison, funny enough, in Coda's original design, the door stayed shut for a full hour before letting you go. If you don't mind, I think we're gonna skip that. Oh. oh. This is something that he and I used to argue about a lot. You know, whether a game ought to actually be playable, whether it means anything if no one can get through it. And I would always defend that, you know, all this work goes into the game, why not make it playable and accessible? And okay. so we just got into heated arguments over it, and there was one time that after one of these conversations, he went home, and a day or two later, he sent me a zip file entitled Playable Games. Oh no. That was full of hundreds of individual games, each of which was just an empty box that you walked around in and nothing else. Believe me, I played every single one of those just to find out if there was like a gag hidden somewhere. There wasn't. There wasn't. <laughs> oh, that's amazing. Okay, so that's a light. That's what we were seeing at the bottom of that thing. Now it's at the top though. Okay. 
Looks like a little bit of light coming into that corner there, I guess. That looks kind of like the same ground texture that was being used in that outdoor. It's the puzzle again, with the exact same solution as the last time. Okay. There's still no clear indication of what makes this puzzle so special that Coda is going to return to it over and over. But I promise I'll share with you my interpretation very shortly. Okay. Well, I mean, the fact that you got to reach through the door that you just went through in order to advance, I mean, that's different. You don't, nor normally you would hit a button from the other side of the door, not that you have to reach back through and flip a switch to get it to go, but... That's interesting. I gotta say, this is probably one of the most fascinating experiences I've ever had with a video game. This is wild. Listen, okay. You there, did you come Here, from above? Here, begins using a kind of dialogue system that he fashioned out of the engine's chat capabilities. Use the one, two, three buttons on your keyboard to respond. Okay, did you come from above? What was up there? Uh, yes, there was a world stamped with whiteness. There was an enormous prison I spent hours in. There were these floating colored blocks. Well, there was all three. I feel like the prison's what most people would be thinking about, but we didn't spend an hour in there. Um, let's see, what was immediately above us? I think, I think the prison is what was immediately above us. That's the world above? You've been there? Now this is important. Did you have to get through a puzzle with two doors and switches? Yes, I did. That was literally the last thing I did before coming here. No, I don't remember having to go through any puzzle. I prefer not to tell you. After all, we've only just met. I mean, yeah, we did. Did you go through a puzzle with two doors and switch. I'm going to say yes. Again, perfect. Now, please, tell us how you solved it. Tell us the solution. Tell us how to get to the other side. I don't remember how I solved it. I'm trying to remember, but I can't. I didn't solve it. Someone else let me in. Trust me, you don't want to go over there. I mean, there is no right answer here. I don't remember how. Someone else did it. Trust me. I mean, I guess I don't want to lie. I'm going to say you don't want to go over there. Oh, no, but I do. We do. We need to get there. Do you understand? It is the most important thing in the world. We have to escape this prison. There must be an ending. I promise you there is nothing I want more. Oh, wow. Almost looks like there's a switch on that. Okay. So they feel like they're in a prison also. Well, if it's a loop-de-loop. -loop. Hello, how did you get here? Was there a puzzle you had to pass through? Uh, do you want to know how to solve it? I mean, is this the same room I was in? It almost feels brighter to me. Um, I'm going to say yes. No, no, we actually find the black space between the doors to be far more interesting. Have you seen it yet? Why would I care about the space between the doors? Actually, now that you mention it, I remember feeling strange as I passed through it. I don't recall space between the doors. The first set, I tried to walk down the sides. I didn't try that on the second one. Maybe there was something you could do. Um, why would I care about the space? I remember feeling strange. Mm, okay, I'm going to say number one. Why would I care? There is a reason, but it may take time before you understand, which is fine. You'll see it again soon. 
<laughs> okay. I'll take your word on that. Oh my goodness. What in the world? And so we make one last descent down to the final floor of the level. Okay. I I'm really starting to get... Like, I've played a couple games now that has like a narrator's voice. I would have never thought I'd like a game like that. But Stanley Parables and this one... And there's another one. I can't think of what it was now, but there was another game that I played. Had like a, a narrative or a narrator as you went along and I'm really growing to like it. If you guys know of some other narrator type games that are really good, let me know in the comments. I'd like to check out a few more of these. There's something about feeling like you're going through something and there's somebody there with you on the journey. It's, it's a really neat effect. Is this like... It's a lamppost. It looks like a okay, prison, Okay, I can't maybe. tell you quite why, but for some reason, Coda fixates on this lamppost. It's going to appear at the end of every single one of his games from here on out. Oh, wow. I'll tell you what I think. Uh, I think that up to this point, you know, he's been making really strange and abstract games with no clear purpose, and maybe you can only float around in that headspace for so long. Because now he wants something to hold on to. He wants a reference point. He wants the work to be leading to something. He wants a destination, which is what this lamppost is. It's a destination. We're going to see it in the work as well. His games are just going to become a lot more cohesive, a lot more fully developed, with more of a clear idea behind them. And as we go, that idea will get clearer and clearer and clearer. Okay. See, I think this was... Was this March 2009? Where are we at now? April? So just the next month. This game is connected to the internet. As you walk around, you can leave notes. All notes you see are left by other players. I can actually leave a note? Nice room. Not. <laughs> okay. So, so first off, I'm sure you can deduce this, but this game is not connected to the internet. Okay, I All wondered. of the notes that you're going to see have been written by Coda. This was actually the first game of his that I ever played. This was shortly after I met him at a weekend game jam in Sacramento, where I grew up. I saw him working on this very level, and it was just so different from anything that anyone else was doing. So right away I was like, I have to be friends with this person. Oh my goodness. In retrospect, I think I was probably a bit too bushy trying to get his attention. Uh, I was over-enthusiastic. But he was very gracious about it and very patient with me. And I cooled off eventually. Look at all... Did he write a note for every one of these? My goodness! Can you... Can you hear? No way. Hello! Reasonable. Oh, feel I, free to skip over any of these notes if they're not doing anything for you. Nothing extra is going to happen if you read all of them. Either way, to me, they convey a sense of loneliness. I see this person who's filled with thoughts and feelings and beliefs and has no way to express them except as scattered and unheard voices in a game that wasn't meant to be played. Okay. Wow. I was thinking but it's that ironic, I... isn't it? That in playing this game and seeing how alone Coda often felt, that we get to know him better and actually kind of connect with him. And I have to be honest with you, this idea is really seductive to me. That I could just play someone's game and see the voices in their head and, and get to know them better and have to do less of the messy in-person socializing. I could just get to know you through your work. <laughs> Freaking bathroom. <laughs> I think this is why I always liked Coda's games so much, is because it felt like they let me have that connection. I felt as though he was inviting me personally into his world. And then I feel less lonely too. Look at all these. This is amazing. This is where I get off. I failed to write anything here. I am compelled. You know, I think there are some online games that have used a feature like this where other people could leave 
like hints and clues and stuff. Take my hand, let's jump together. Oh, I thought I could maybe jump. I was gonna try. Wow. I mean, I don't know where I'm supposed to go. I'm just gonna keep following along this main path here, but this is wild. What that say? Uh, don't listen to the other note. Okay. I'm not safe. Wow, it is just enormous. And the fact that they wrote all the, he wrote, Coda, wrote all these. I saw a person walking down there. Now it won't come back. Okay. See this giant painting. That's pretty awesome. I wonder if that's supposed to like represent all the thoughts and messages and stuff all collaged together. Cabbage shapes our nation. <laughs> What's this one say? From up here, it just looks like dots. Wow. This is so fascinating. I almost feel like I hear like talking or something in the background too. There must be a reason for it though. I, I hope you guys don't mind that I am like not gonna read all these things. I beat the game. <laughs> I'm just stopping occasionally to see At what At the end of says. this level, we're going to see the puzzle again. And here, I'll tell you what I think the puzzle means. Each of these games represents an idea that was on Coda's mind at the time that he was making it. And the puzzle is a way of closing the door on a previous chapter of his life before moving on to the next one. Mm. In each of his games, after exploring a theme that, you know, he might find difficult, Coda can then place this puzzle that he knows has a reliable solution, he understands exactly how it works, and so it gives him a simple mechanism for moving on. And because there's this dark area between the doors, a space between spaces, before you move on, you get to pause. Just for a moment, a few seconds to reflect on and let go of the events that led you here to step back and connect the pieces together, to grasp at that elusive, bigger picture. Okay. Developer, answer me, please. Interesting. There's one more here. One person solved it. How do you leave notes? There's a lamp post. Whoa. Kind of creepy. Are you there? Please say something. It can be anything. I just need you to say something. Talk to me, please. Wow. May to June 2009. Porn stars die Okay, too. this one is tough. It's gonna kinda just spin its own wheels for a few minutes. Hang with it. Okay. Okay, so I, we just kinda hang out here for a minute, okay. Oh. All right. Kind of a interesting vibe going on here all right that's kind of a cool look on those uh the stairs though oh here's that texture again see like this oh, is in the well the whole game and there's nothing that's particularly interesting about it you just walk to the end of a hallway except for some reason Cody gets really fixated on this prison that has all of this modern furniture and I don't know why, but he decides he needs to revisit this prison. He's going to start over, use the same assets, turn it into something else. Okay, cool. Here's version two. Okay. Uh, what furniture ought to go in the center of the room? How about a TV with surround sound, a refrigerator, put a giant hole in the ground? Mmm. I kind of like the idea of a TV.
That's uh, okay. Now what? Along the wall of the room. To put a huge picture of a horse, I'd really like a washing machine. Ten stoves lined up along the wall. Um, <laughs> it, I was thinking it's a prison, so I was trying to think of something I'd like to, to have if I was stuck in a prison. Mm, stoves won't do me any good. Neither will. Let's do the picture. Oh, well, we got couches. It's like it's just building the same thing anyways. I think we should light up this room a bit. It probably doesn't matter what I pick. Oh, I could see the Stanley Parable. That was kind of the whole gist of the game is the fact that you don't really have control over anything. Your, your decisions don't really matter. I almost feel like that's what's happening here all of a sudden. A skylight, full, you know, let's just pick number one. Let's open this baby. Okay, and a table, you need a table. Who are you? Where exactly are you doing this from? I'm pretty sure none of my choices are making a difference. Tables were invented in 1935. Let's go with number two. Yep, it's kind of coming together the way that they wanted it to, oh wow. Uh, there's a bit more to this one, but still, it's not really communicating anything. It, it's kind of just weird for weirdness' sake. Yeah, I could totally dig that. I thought it was like gonna unveil all my choices. So, okay, he throws <laughs> it out and starts over. This time, he comes at the prison idea from a different direction. Hello, please walk. That's probably forward. Ha ha. This guide will enable you to escape the prison environment. Follow the instructions carefully. Take care that you remember each step. First, click on the table. Uh, this is the table? Good. Go over to the photo frame and click to turn it slightly. Now, turn the flood lamp in this room off and then turn it back on. I guess that's this here. Now go to the left side sofa, move it over a little. Finally, touch the shelves. That's it. In a real prison, the escape would now open. Return to the start to be taken back to your prison. Okay. Why would I want to go back to the prison? Return. Interesting. And of and course, now the table is gone and you can't begin the chain of events to escape. Here's a version where there are no bars, but you can't actually get to the well. And then a version where the inside of the prison is the outside and the outside is the inside. <laughs> Let me just blink you real quick through a few more of these. I mean, he really unloaded on this prison idea. There's nearly a dozen of them. Personally, oh, wow. I think it's awful to watch this. To see a person basically unraveling through their work. And for what? Like, at what point do you just go, eh, maybe there are game ideas other than this prison that I could be working on. But Coda doesn't have that voice telling you to stop. That particular mechanism of defense against yourself. Without it, you just spiral. And so he keeps going and going and going and going and going. And then he hits on something. And he likes it. And that's it. He's done. He stops making prisons. This is the very last version of the prison game that he created. And the reason I think it works is that the prison is not actually in it. Yo. That's wild. It's just silent. You feel alone because it's silent and you hear nothing but your footsteps. Wow. I mean, it does. It feels kind of like a prison. You feel hopeless, trapped, and yet you're completely in the open at the same time. Wow. Hello? Who is this? 
Hey, it's me. I'm you from after you escaped the prison. Okay. You're me? Hmm. So you were trapped in this prison too? Yep. I was in a fur. It's a conversation. And so this is what Coda wants, is to be able to talk to someone, to share what's on his mind, and to get some good advice from someone who knows. But the irony is that even in this scenario, you're still talking to yourself. You know, all of these games so far are Coda talking to himself. Oh. Uh, yeah, escape tutorial. That's where I am right now. Oh, I'm so glad that I know that I get out eventually. What's it like to escape? Actually, I'm already forgetting what being inside was like. It's strange, but in a way, I kind of miss being in the prison. It feels like being completely still and wildly in motion at the same time. I mean, there's nothing we can really do out here. Would I rather be in the prison or out here? I don't. I don't know. I don't think it really matters. I'm just gonna. I'm gonna pick number three. It's kind of the most creative of the list there. Do you feel any different? Sometimes I'm scared to get out, and then things will be exactly the same as before. No, I'm really the same person now as I was back then. It actually does change. I don't feel like the same person at all. Uh, well, I mean, I'm gonna say I feel like the same person. Oh no, that's awful. That's the wrong thing I can imagine. Don't worry, it's actually not a bad thing, I promise. Well, you get something else in exchange. The problem is that you don't actually know who you are right now. I'm gonna say that one. Wait, if you're me, then did you get a call from another version of you when you were trapped? No, I think I'm the first person to call back. Yes, I did get a call. That's how I escaped. I'm gonna say I'm the first person. Then can you tell me how to get out? Maybe I can come find you. What do I have to do? To get out, all you have to do is be sincere. To get out, you need to tell me how you feel right now. To get out, just talk with me for a bit. I mean, none of this makes any sense. I'm just gonna pick one. What? <laughs> right? That will free me? How does that work? Listen, you can't know until you're out, but I promise it works. Just be sincere. It will make sense. Uh, how about number three? It will make sense, even though I, I have no idea how it would make sense. Sincere about what? That's exactly what you need to figure out in order to escape. Hmm. I can see why he considers this a fitting conclusion to the prison games. After all of the obsession and frustration, just to be told by someone you can trust that things are going to be okay, wouldn't hmm. that be nice? That was wild. Yeah, that last version was definitely kind of the So what would it creepiest. look like if Coda wanted to make a game about talking to someone other than himself? Yo, this is intriguing. Okay. To me, this environment is meant to represent Coda's puzzle, with the two doors on either side and a dark transitional space between. Oh, that being one door and this being a door, and this is a dark space in between. Okay, I think I see what he's saying there. <laughs> That's kind of creepy. Clean. Well, my goodness, I'm glad as all heck that you showed up. Thought I might have, thought I might be having to clean this entire house all by myself. And right miserable that would have been. You'll Everyone notice that the quality of the art is a step up from previous games, including this new and improved chat system, which he started using from this point on. From here on out, he begins putting much more effort into the visual polish of his work. And this particular game took two months to create as a result. Wow. 
Okay, uh, don't worry about me. A place this nice. I'm glad to stay here all night. I'm l and lousy homes make lousy loners. Are we cleaning this whole place? Uh, well, I'm going to choose number one. Place looks great. Well, now you're just might be getting a little ahead of yourself there. No? Why don't we start cleaning and then you decide whether you could do it all night? I'll finish up here. In the meantime, you could please clear the table. Okay, that was easy enough. Much nicer. That's the table I want to see. Now, would you please run to the bedroom and make the bed? Okay, that's the bathroom, obviously. Yeah, it's a mess. All right, click. While you're in there, why don't you straighten out the rug a bit? Okay. Do you enjoy being a house cleaner? How'd you end up doing this job? It's been a long time since I've seen a house this messy. That's number one. Well, I don't enjoy it so much as I need it. While I'm working, I feel a kind of calm that rests in the pit of my ribcage. My soul just can't be soothed any other way, it seems, which I guess is all about all that matters. Oh, that and a tidy couch. Would you straighten up the pillows on the sofa out here? Okay, can I clean up anything I click? No, I can't, okay. I was beginning to wonder if that was gonna be the, the idea behind it, is that you instinctively just start kind of cleaning. There we are. Oh dear, looks like someone spilled a drink over by the couch. Maybe mop that up along with, oh, here it is. All right. I feel compelled to share an incredibly cheesy personal insight. You okay with that? Make it especially cheesy. Yeah, I'll try to get by. Do you absolutely have to? Yes, I want cheese. Bring it on. Lots of dots. No. <laughs> no, it was stupid. Sorry, never mind. Hey, these dishes need to be washed. Why don't you come do that? Click. It's done. Last I checked, the tub needed cleaned. How about you scrub it down? No need to be perfect. We're just all human. Okay. Are there still books scattered on the floor in the bedroom? If so, would you put them back on the shelf? All right. Perfect. Now then, how about you come and clean these dishes off the After table? After the intense set of prison games, this house cleaning level almost feels like cleansing. It's the moment after a particularly difficult or traumatic experience where you just need to let it sit and digest inside of you, and eventually cohere into something meaningful. Okay. I thought it was like ending. Do the chores ever end? Uh, whatever you do, you have to absolutely love it. Otherwise, you, it owns you. So why don't we be with I know the that task? I really like this game. Of all of his work, actually, this was the only one that he called me up to ask me to come over and look at it. This was during a period of a few months where he was like grossly happy all the time. Just walked around with a constant smile on his face. Okay. I hope this game doesn't have like a sad ending. For some reason, I, I gotta... I almost feel like this is gonna end up having a, a sad ending to it. Oh, looks like the dishes need washed again. Oh, can't do that. Tidy up a bit. Uh, the tub, okay. No matter going around just clicking whatever it'll let me. Earlier when I said I had a really cheesy thought, I was going to say that it occurred to me that one's house is a lot like one's soul. You take care of it, and it takes care of you, eh? Don't know why I felt so weird about saying that. I get it. That's a weird thing to say to someone you just met. Yeah, you're right, that's pretty cheesy. But there's a bit of truth in it, no? I'm gonna say there's truth in it. Dots? Anyway, so, housekeeping. Let's do this. Let's keep doing this. Books, would you please clean up the books? Thanks, oh my goodness, how long is this gonna keep going? This is the thing that the guy enjoyed the most, was this little setup here? Oh goodness, those pillows are a mess on the couch. I'm glad he made this. I'm glad he found some peace. Question. But, of course, it can't last. 
The music stops, your companion is gone, it's time to leave. The door at the top of the hill is now open as well. Again, you can't stay in the dark space for too long. You just can't. You have to keep moving. It's how you stay alive. Okay, does that mean I gotta I gotta run? He said the top of the hill though. This is like the bottom of the hill, isn't it? Maybe I went to the wrong. Oh, that might be a door up there. I mean, that's a beautiful little setting they got. Oh, there's like no walls here all of a sudden. Okay. Ah. It's like there's moments in this where it's really awesome feeling. And then there's moments where it's like, it feels sad. That's why I'm so nervous it's going to have a sad ending. You know, find out Coda's dead or something. Which is the whole point of the puzzle doors, right? That sooner or later you have to pick up and move. I really thought that was the point of it. September 2009. Items you this love, one gets member only fancy. prices. Why did you come here today? Was it to improve your life? Was it to get a better job? Was it to make your relationships more meaningful? No. You came here to be perfect, to become perfect. This workshop is going to teach you how to be perfect. I want your friends, the people in your life, to look at you and think, wow, this person is a better human being than I am. Right now, who do you think about that way in your own life? Who do you know who is so well-developed as a person that they make you feel disgusted with yourself? Compared to whom you feel useless, selfish, ungrateful. I intend to make you into that person. Perfection is within your grasp. And the question is not how we do it, but how do we do it effortlessly? Effortlessly. About halfway through the this game, is easy. the perspective it is so easy. shifts. It is so easy. Oh... What? And you play as the teacher. And suddenly, you discover that your teacher is just as bigoted and afraid as you are. Oh, and also you can move around the classroom now. What? Yeah, no, I can't imagine. This teacher would be terrified seeing that on the other side of the room. This is the key. How do I achieve it with no effort? One of the way... On the way to work, I told an elderly person to start contributing to society. Kids should not follow their dreams. Uh, what happens if I push a number here? This is the key, okay. Well, let me tell you right now, if it isn't effortless, then it's not the right answer. I still love you, it's just that you make me feel cold on the inside. Being alone must be awful. Well, can I pick that one? If you are torturing yourself, trying to find the right solution for your life, you're not doing it right. Drinking is not hurting my life. Thank goodness all of you perceive me as being wise and intelligent. This is confusing. Oh, there's the light pole. I'm going to hit one. Seek out only... Can I go? Oh, I thought maybe I could go up there. Seek out only one thing. What is the easiest, simplest path forward? Ooh, I'm developing a cyst. Gross. Do you understand that you won't be happy until you love me? This is for you. Uh, number two, I guess? I don't know. Am I just supposed to pick the yellow options? There is no truth. There is no path. Do what is easiest. Do what is simplest. Feel what is true. I'm just picking the yellow ones maybe nothing no one it's coming for you it's going to destroy you everybody run <laughs> I'm gonna select that see what happens I felt pretty hard for this one I feel like it's one of the most relatable experiences that you can have to uh, assume that some other person is perfect 
and totally fulfilled in every way and completely miss all of the little flaws that make them painfully human. I think about this game a lot these days. Interesting. 2010. I mean, this one took a lot longer than all the others for Coda to make. It was four months between this and the last one. That's twice as long as it took him to make any other game before this, and it's not like it's particularly complex, so I remember I found that a little strange at the time. This kind of reminds me of um, a little bit like Stanley Parables. What was the game, the perspective game? What was that? Super, super minimal? Super liminal? Something along that line. I think that's the other narration game I was thinking of earlier. But this kind of has that same vibe with the red curtains and the stage walls and stuff. Okay. Talk about feeling empty. All right, the performance is beginning. Places, please. Uh, in this scene, you will be playing as me. We are at the gathering of professionals. First, you'll start out leaning against this wall. Good, stay right there. The woman across the room in this chair is a professional photographer of animals. It's your dream to photograph animals professionally. This is your one chance to learn something from her, to gain something to succeed. Go on, say something to her. Hello, sorry I have to leave. Where's the bathroom? I mean, I guess I would say hello. Sounds scary. Hello, that's it. That's not a conversation. You need to actually converse with her. Be a human being. Do it again. I'm super, super scared right now. I like you. Here are all my hopes and dreams. Um... I guess. I mean, I did say this is kind of freaky. I'm going with number one. No, no, no. That's not what I said to her at all. You're completely missing the tone of the conversation. I was reserved, but I knew what I wanted. I was confident. For some reason, it was just that one moment, but I was confident. Maybe it's that you need a better feel of the setting. What? There were a lot of people around us. I'll give you some props to work with. These cones that bounce when you touch them will represent the people nearby. Now talk to her again. Okay, you must have worked really hard to get where you are. I'll bet you've learned to lean into the pain. What are some sacrifices you had to make? Uh, that one sounds interesting. You're messing it all up again. You'll freak her out if the conversation gets that personal that quickly. Do you not realize how important it was for me? I'll never get another opportunity like this again. Everything was riding on it. Hmm, I want to try something. Try stepping back from the stage. Okay. The curtain's gonna drop. Oh, the prison. Listen to that. That is so wild. Okay, well, I guess we just start walking this way. Is this supposed to be the space between two doors again? Oh. Okay, yes, now this the is game working. ends with this eerie premonition of what's going to happen next in Coda's life. The solution to social anxiety, to fears of having to perform and having to chase success, the answer for Coda is to withdraw, to hide himself away, which is what leads to scenarios like the stairs that slowed you down several games ago, where it just becomes harder and harder to access Coda's inner landscape because he keeps retreating. He just keeps backing away from possible connections to anyone other wow. than himself. And to be honest, I didn't consider it very healthy when I first played this game. You know, it, it looks to me like he was trying to justify the idea of just disconnecting yourself from the world. And that wasn't what I wanted for him or for his games. Because I feel like a lot of his games are inviting me to connect. 
to connect with this person, to bring him closer. I actually got chills what from you that. Do? After this, Koda went off and took another five months to make a new game. Okay. M Mobius trip? To play this game properly, you must keep your eyes closed. Okay, I'm going to try it. This, this will be interesting, seeing as uh, you guys can actually see me keeping my eyes closed. Okay. I'm assuming I'll get instructions on what I'm supposed to do. I'm going to push forward. Uh, anything happening? I don't really... I mean, I hear some, like, explosions and stuff, but I'm not... Oh! Okay, let's try going backwards. Sound like something happened. You should probably open your eyes if you haven't already. It's pretty much impossible to solve otherwise. <laughs> and there is a solution, by the way. Oh, whoa. Uh, there was a giant door, and then my vision went black. I am blind. I have no idea. Yo! I gotta see it. Whoa. Okay. So we got the blind leading the blind here. Is that what we got? Help. I'm blind. I can't see anything. What's going on? Yeah, I can't die like this. I can't die like this. I don't know. I'm trying to find... Uh, okay. What's going on? Can we open the door? Please, someone talk to me. Please help me solve... Uh, be like this forever. I thought maybe we could open the door. There's a lamppost up there. Okay, he said there is a solution. Something enormous just appeared on radar. I don't know yet. I'm trying to find the shields. Uh, is there anything clickable? Wait a minute, is this a door we can leave over here? The only way to stop it is to speak something that is honest. What did it say? Speak something that is honest? Uh, I can't see anything. Okay. Okay. Uh, the only way to stop... I did... I have burst creative. I can't... I can't keep making these. My work is always fun. Uh, a burst of creative energy. No, no, that isn't the truth. Or isn't truthful. Okay, let's try it again. Uh, help, I'm blind. I can't see anything. What's going on? Right, let me explain how you're supposed to do this. On either side of the room are elevators, which go up to an upper level. You have to go up, walk over to the person who's standing there, and then select dialogue option number two. Okay. I can't keep making these. Yes, that's it. That's the truth. Okay, I don't feel like it anymore. I'm out like of I ideas. Like I said, I was getting concerned. First off, he's never been this explicit in his work about exactly what he's thinking. So, where's that coming from? But hmm. then even weirder, his work has potentially stopped being an outlet for him. Not like he's having trouble iterating on ideas, but he literally just can't think of new ideas anymore. And in person, he was being a lot more distant than usual. Like, you know how sometimes a person will just deflect anything that you say in order to keep themselves disconnected all the time? It was that kind of thing. Here was the point in my relationship with Koda where I really started to wonder if he needed my help in some way. Hmm. I could see that. I don't feel it anymore. I'm out of ideas. It drain. It's draining me. I'm gonna say it's draining me. Keep going. Keep talking. I haven't been honest. I can't figure out how to say the thing. I thought it was going to be easy. Uh, I'm gonna say I haven't been honest. You're doing it. It's working. I'm alone. I'm stuck in it. I have to work harder. 
I'm going to say I'm alone. We're going to be okay. Okay. His games are going to get more desperate from here on out. Oh no. After this game, it's almost six months before he finishes something new. Are they still considered games when they're kind of like sad like that? Hello, where am I? What is this? Uh, I guess where am I? Oh wow. Where did this island come from? How do I get out of here? Hello, is anyone there? The music's like all messed up and distorted and stuff too. Uh, I'm gonna see how do I get out. Oh, there's another one, okay. It's pretty creative though. Is this a person? How lovely. It's been a long time since I've talked to anyone. What's wrong? You look lo oh, we lost our other island. I'm completely out of ideas. When I try to create, I feel empty. I have nothing left to give to my work. I'm gonna say number three. Yeah, this is almost disturbing. Oh no. What's happening? Did something change? There was a machine that kept going and it stopped. I'm trying to find this engine that used to protect me to start it again. I say number two. It's like we're it's like we're playing as Coda. You do feel like you're playing as Coda. Wait, you're looking for a machine? I think I know where it is. It isn't far. What? You have to take me to it. I need to see it to know why it stopped. I'm going to number three. If the okay. last game featured Coda talking explicitly about his creative frustrations, this one turns it up to 11. Oh. Now, put yourself in my shoes playing this. Here's a friend whose work is exhibiting signs of struggle, frustration, anxiety, depression, even. Uh -huh. And yet still, he keeps making games. He keeps throwing himself into the grinder even when he clearly doesn't have the energy for it anymore. Why? What is it for? Hmm. Uh, I can take you to it, but there's a problem. It's guarded by a difficult puzzle. If you can help me solve the puzzle, we'll find the machine. Deal? You got deal, deal. It doesn't matter what I say, does it? We're going to end up there one way or another. I'm tempted to select that one. I'm going to say deal, though. Number one, deal. Because there were two of them. <laughs> A difficult puzzle. Perfect. Come along, I'll show it to you. Because from my perspective at the time and, and just what I knew of him, this was a result of how isolated he was. He was in his own little bubble, just sitting at his computer all day, not really showing these games to anyone, uh, not releasing them onto the internet. And so he didn't have anyone outside of himself to connect with. He had no mm. outlet to ground himself on. Okay, uh, hey, I recognize this. I've solved this before. This is easy. Uh, I'm gonna say I recognize this. Oh, wonderful. Can you tell me how to do it? First, you have to close the door. First, you have to open the door. First, you press the switch on the inside. Uh, we're gonna first open the door. Okay, now what? Oh, look, it's white in here instead of black. Now you have to close the door. Now you have to close the first door. Now you have to open the first door. Now you press the switch on the inside. Uh, I'm gonna say you have to close the first door. All right, what's next? Now we press the switch here. Number three. Ah, that was so you simple. Can't I can't believe I never solved it out of this. loneliness. It doesn't work that way. You can't be the one writing both the questions and the answers. Then there's no movement. Then there's no circulation. If all of your anxieties are being channeled into your work, then if the work ever fails, you have no backup and you're just going to crash. Oh, something sounds very sad out there. 
Okay. Uh, what are you talking about? There's no machine here. There are just words on the wall. Number two. Trust me, you'll see. You have to say the game development is simple and joyous and that you love it 100% of the time. Okay, making games is simple. Sure, making games is easy. All right, making games is effortless. Let's see. Uh, number one. Uh, but it wasn't true. Why did the walls just crumble? Why did I feel so awful when I said that? Okay, number one. Don't worry about it, just keep talking. Keep saying that creation is easy. Okay, when I make games, I feel completely energized. I am constantly excited and enthusiastic about my work. It is easy, it never stops being easy. Okay, number three. We are breaking some stuff. Seeing uh, this game at the time that he made it, it looked really unhealthy to me. I was watching him do this to himself and I hated it. I hated seeing him so trapped. It's like video games are not worth this amount of suffering. <laughs> you got that right. Okay, every time I make something, I feel better about myself. Just never stop creating and you'll never feel bad. It's such a simple solution. Number three. Perfect. This is someone I really cared about. That feels fantastic. And I used to get so much joy out of seeing him create. For him to suddenly become angry and frustrated like this, it was the worst thing for me. Can I even leave? Nope, it won't let me leave. Okay. Uh, please, where's the machine? I'm going to vomit. None of this is helpful. I'm gonna, number three. Patience, you have to trust me. I promise this will work. Please continue. Pain breezes effortlessly. Uh, that one's tricky for me to say. Effortlessly off me. Any sacrifices made for my work are worth it 100% of the time. It always pays off eventually. I mean, we're supposed to keep making it sound like it's super easy, so I'm going to go with number one. Yes, more. Keep know. going. This is what I felt at the time. I don't know no how else to explain it. I wanted it to stop more than anything. I had never felt so rotten. I just... I needed more than I had ever needed anything for this to stop. He's going back to his prison? What? But it didn't stop. What? After finishing this one, Coda takes another seven months and comes up with a new game. May 2011. The Machine. Okay. I mean, this looks pretty cool, but knowing what we just came from, I'm a little nervous to walk forward on this one. I had chills from that last one again. It's like, I don't know if it's because the narrator is adding more substance to what we're playing. Like, I don't know if I would have had that same effect if I had just played the game, didn't know Coda, didn't have the narrator, or if it's because he's giving us all this extra information that it's putting more meaning behind the game than would have originally been there. It's wild. But yeah, I had chills. I, let me know, have any of these things given you chills like while you were listening to it? Because my goodness, I had some on two of them now. Okay, ma'am, glad you've arrived safely. We've captured the machine. It's waiting for you now. You can begin the interrogation whenever you're ready. I intend to be quick, quiet, or brutal. Let's go quick. Very good. Just be warned that someone called the press, so we might have a bit of attention on this one. Also, one more thing is that you should know about the machine. It calls itself Coda. Is this the last game he made? Okay, so we got the press here. Yo, that is wild. Do you know where the poisonous games are? Is that what I said? 
that's the machine. And of you course, stopped. it's the machine. Okay. You stopped. Are these things that we can interact with? Is that the lamppost? Uh, you stopped feel. You stopped feeding us. Your work was keeping us alive. Your work was keeping us healthy. Um, how about you stopped feeding us? Those people out there, can you imagine what pain you've put them through? It was only because of your creation that any of us could make it through every day. How could we possibly go back to trusting you to do this job? Mm. I'm going to go with number three. This is really disturbing. How about this for a start? You need to go to the people who are out there and apologize to them. You have to admit to the people that you allowed them to suffer. I've been so alone. Now, I'm interrogating the machine. I'm, I'm, I don't know what my position is supposed to be here. I'm going to say I felt so alone. I, I've been so alone. I've missed Coda. Apologize for leaving me. No, nothing. Think carefully. I know how to hurt you. I have seen the thing you fear. Uh, oh man, this could turn bad really fast. I'm torn between one and three. I'm gonna say one. I'm trying not to make this too scary for myself. <laughs> All right, then I will apologize to the people on your behalf. So the idea behind this is supposed to be that Coda lost the will or desire to make games. And he kept looking for that secret something that was going to give him the desire to, to do it again. And he felt like he was letting a bunch of people down in the process. I think that's what they're kind of getting at here. My, fo my followers, my friends. I'm going to say followers. I don't think he really felt connected to any of these people. It falls on me to deliver bad news. I have a troubling revelation. Uh, I'm going to go to number two. The machine will not apologize to us. The machine refuses to admit that it deliberately hurt us. I'm going to say apologize. I don't think it deliberately did anything. But this is not important. We are stronger than it thinks we are. We will find a way to live without it. We do not need its games. I'm going to go number two. It almost has like a freedom feel to it. Like, okay, Coda's going to let that go and just realize he doesn't have to make games to feel fulfilled. I hope that's, that's the way I'm taking it. If it takes another turn in a direction other than that, you'll know at least where I was thinking with it. Let us pay it retribution. Let us show it that we are not failures. I'm going that way again. Number two. Follow me. We will destroy the machine. No, follow me. We will destroy everything that the machine has created. Uh, I guess we'll just destroy the machine. If it's not, if it's not working, the desire is gone. Let's just stop living on the past. It's kind of what I'm thinking at least. Where's the machine? We are literally going to start shooting the machine. Is that what it is? Oh. Yo. Freaky.
Okay, I feel like we're more or less destroying everything that it made. So now the work is becoming self-destructive. Yeah. And I'll tell you, at the time that I first played this game, shortly after he made it, here's what I'm thinking to myself. I'm thinking that Code is stuck in his own head, and that it's having a very negative effect on him, and that all he needs to do is just start showing his work to people, to get some actual feedback on his games. It might get him out of isolation. Oh, and so, as I'm thinking this, I realize that I could be the one to initiate it. Because it would never occur to Coda to start actively soliciting feedback, so what if I did it for it? If he could see the difference it would make to have more actual conversations with other human beings, would that bring him out of his mental spiral? Would it give him confidence in himself? Would it bring meaning back into his work? Oh my goodness, this is so weird. We are literally destroying everything that was created. Oh. So I started showing Coda's work to people. I took this one, and the islands which you just played, the theater, the notes, the house cleaning game, and some of the prison escape games. I brought them to people that I knew and, and trusted. I asked their opinions. And the great part is that they really loved his games. You know, the point of it all was just to give him some external reference point, but they, they genuinely loved his work. There was nothing for him to be afraid of. Maybe. What's in the machine? Put down your weapon. I'm not in control at the moment, from what I can tell. At least none of my movements are. I'm going to push the button to see if I fire. I bet that that's still working. Can you see why I felt like this was the right thing to do? Because it's the thing that I always feel like I need, to be told that my work is good, that I am good. When, when someone really connects with a thing that I've made, when they see themselves purely in my work, there's nothing that feels better. I got to give that very same feeling to my friend. I did something... I really felt like I'd done something good. Like, like I was a good person. I felt like there was a friend who was in trouble and was unhappy and, and maybe didn't like themselves, and I could fix it. If I could give him this gift, maybe I could fix the problem. When they told me how much they enjoyed his games, it was the best feeling. It was the absolute best feeling. It, it made me feel so happy. So beautifully, beautifully happy. Okay. Creepy. Um, so anyway, Coda finishes this game, and then really he just kind of takes off for a while. So this is June of 2011, and I didn't hear anything from him for several weeks, I guess. Um... Uh, and so out of nowhere, one day I get an email, and it's got a private link to a new game of Coda's. This one is called The Tower, and to my knowledge, it's the last game that Coda ever made. So let's take a look. Hmm. The Tower. Okay. And this is where I have trouble saying anything meaningful about Coda's work. Because more than anything else, the tower just feels distant. It feels like it's trying to distance itself from the world. It's a very cold game. Yeah. Absolutely. I think this guy's found a calling into horror games. <laughs> this room actually has a maze in it. Except that all the walls of the maze are invisible. And then every time you touch one of the walls, there's this awful flashing and noise. So the experience is really miserable. The game goes beyond not being meant to be played. It actually seems to despise the player for trying to play it at all. Oh my gosh. But I do want to show you the rest of the level, so when you're ready to continue, press enter and I'll put a bridge over the maze. Thank you. Oh, I 
thought I did it. There it is. Yo, my goodness, this is really disturbing. Koda, what happened to you, buddy? Or girl? I don't know. It, it, we don't have a gender to whoever it was. Whoever, whoever this Koda person and to be was. Fair, it's not like this is the first game that's needed some modification to be playable. Like the house cleaning game. You know, that one used to actually loop the cleaning chores and you just cleaned a house forever. I had to cut it off so that you could exit the house and the game would actually end. But that game had an idea that it was actually trying to communicate. What's the deeper idea behind the invisible maze? Okay. The only way past this challenge is to randomly guess the six digit code. Like the invisible maze, it's frustrating to me because it's the opposite of everything else that Coda has made. It doesn't encourage thought or engagement. It doesn't ask anything of me except a lot of my time. If I could have reached him during this time, then maybe I could have asked him, but I couldn't. I still don't really understand why this is here. I'll put the code on the ground for you here though so that we can move on. How did you even find that code? I wonder if he was able to like look in the code to find the code. <laughs> That's what I'm guessing. Because I don't know what the odds are of being able to randomly guess a six digit number. It's got to be crazy, crazy high though. Borderline impossible, possibly. Impossible, possibly. Oh, well, that sounded kind of cool. The way that went. The tower. The switch to open this door is actually on the other side of the door, meaning that it's literally impossible to solve from this side. So even if you somehow brute forced your way through the first two challenges and you got to this point, there's actually just no way to progress. Wow. And it's scary for me, the idea of Koda cutting himself off entirely, just saying, you know, that's it, that's the end of the conversation, not giving me any way to fix the problem. Wow. I feel like a failure, I guess, when I can't fix the problem. I've felt like that before about things. But I can open this door for you, so let me do that. Yeah, I've definitely been there before where I really want to fix a thing, but it's like you can't find the solution, and so you, Was you I do a kind of feel like a for failure. For not understanding this game? I, mean, I don't know why I would be. It's not like everything needs to have a solution, but I feel it somehow. I feel like I failed, and I don't understand why. I remember, it's June of 2011, I'm playing this for the very first time, and as I'm playing, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know this person. Hmm. I have no idea who this person is. It wasn't the guy I knew, it wasn't my friend. I had come to so many conclusions from looking at all of his work up to this point, and then suddenly none of them... I had been trying to, though, that was the thing. For years I was trying to get to know him, to understand who he actually was and, and what he stood for. I asked him so many times to please just tell me what his games mean to him. I asked him please to tell me what the three dots mean. I saw those three and dots. And he wouldn't. Maybe he just liked doing really random things. There was no answer, he just loved to create. I just felt so strongly that if I could have connected with him, that if I could have somehow made his work my own, that I would finally be once and for all happy. It was that I needed to see myself in someone else. I needed to be someone other than me. But he stopped and left. And it felt somehow like I had failed. Hmm. Yeah, I, I mean, it is kind of... Where did I screw up? interesting feel to this place but it feels nothing like the stuff we saw before very ominous dear davy thank you for your interest i am in my the games. reason that you stopped making games aren't i i need to ask it's you because not because of what i did anymore. i poisoned it for you so because he shared his games to try to inspire him But I mean, he was already 
all the way until this game, he was clearly already reaching a point where he was not enjoying the game. So I don't see how he would be the problem. I don't think oh. I ever told you this, but when I took your work and I was showing it to people, it actually felt... <laughs> it felt as though I were responsible for something important and valuable. I wonder at times whether you think I am making these games for you. I mean, that's a very valid point. If he was making them for himself, then why was he sharing them with him? You've so infected my personal space that it's possible I did begin to plant solutions in my work somewhere hidden between games. Like the space between the doors. And the people who played them, they treated me like I was important. They really listened and cared about what I had to say. Even though I was showing your work, it was... I felt good about myself. Finally. For a moment, while I had that, I liked myself. If there was an answer, a meaning, would it make you any happier? Would you stop taking my games and showing them to people against my wishes? Giving them something that is not yours to give. Violating the one boundary that keeps me safe. Would you stop changing my games, stop adding lampposts to them? Okay, I'm beginning to wonder if our narrator is actually the person that was like changing things that he thought the games needed, fixing them in some fashion. I guess we're going to find out as we move forward. Would you simply and then let you them stopped. be what they and are? And I didn't have anything left to show people. I, I just had to be with myself. And as soon as that happened, there was no feeling at all. Nothing. Less than nothing. What does that mean? When I'm around you, I feel physically ill. You desperately need something, and I cannot give it to you. I literally do not have it. Struggling to come up with new ideas is not making me depressed. Low points are just a part of the process. And that makes sense. The fact that you think I am frustrated or broken says more about you than about me. I realize that this doesn't make sense to you just yet. Which is fine. You're not my problem to solve. Oh my goodness. But I do hope that one day it clicks and that you make peace with this thing you are wrestling. I'm afraid that I did something really stupid because I don't like myself. And when you finally see what I'm talking about, don't say anything. Okay. That's why I'm releasing this collection of your work is because I haven't been able to find any other way to reach you. I've tried everything. And so a part of me has hope that if I put this compilation out into the world, and if I put my name on it, that maybe enough people will play it so that it'll find its way to you, so that I can tell you that I'm sorry. I know I screwed up. If I apologize to you truly and deeply, will you start making games again? Please. I need to feel okay with myself again. And I always felt okay as long as I had your work to see myself in. I mean, is, is something wrong with me? Because I know that I did an awful thing, and I'm doing it again right now. Like, I'm, I'm showing people your work, but I can't stop myself from doing it. That's how badly I need to feel something again. Like, I'm an addict. There has to be something wrong with me. Can I apologize? What if I tell you I was wrong? Will that work? Will that fix it? I, I, I don't know. I don't think it will, but there's nothing else that I can do. Just tell me what you want. I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Please, 
What? Start making games again. Please help me. Please give me some of whatever it is that, that makes you complete. I want whatever that wholeness is that you just summoned out of nothing and you put in your work. Again. You were complete in some way that I never was. And I want to know how to, how to I want to know how to be a good person. I want to know how not to hate myself. Please. I'm fading. And all I want is to know that I'm going to be okay. Epilogue. I'm really confused. <laughs> the lamp post got an upgrade. Is it just another prison? More, 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 more love, more praise, more people telling me that I'm good. Always more, more, more. It's like a disease. What? Solution. 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 I mean, this, fe this feels like Stanley Parable totally at the moment. Absolute confusion. I guess if someone had told me ahead of time that he just really enjoyed making prison games, maybe I wouldn't have thought he was so desperate. I wouldn't have told so many people that he was depressed. Maybe he just likes making prisons. I mean, everybody's got their thing, right? This is totally weird. Even now, the disease is telling me to stop. Don't show people what a shitty person you are. They'll hate you. I'm just walking. I have no idea what I'm doing. And I can't do anything with that. Whoa. This is actually super cool right here. Hope these don't start crumbling. I'm going to be crushed into the weight if of whatever this is. I knew that my life depended on finding something to be driven by other than validation. What would that even be? <laughs> it's strange, but the thought of not being driven by external validation is unthinkable. Like, I actually cannot conceive of what that would be like. Interesting. Interesting thought. That's what I mean there. An interesting look, too. What now? Man, it sounds like the narrator is the one that's battling with the question now. Go. And I'm sorry, because I know that I said that I would be here and I, and I would walk you through this, but I'm starting to feel like I have a lot of work to do. I have a lot that I need to make up for, and so I'm just gonna... Okay. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of my thought too, now what? <laughs> yeah, this is wild looking here. I'm going through each door, even if it doesn't look like it means anything. I'm going through each one of them. Wow. Kind of reminds me of the very first area we started, where it's like there's just some random thing kind of hanging and floating for no real reason. Okay, it looks like there's more floors up there. Do I just, do I hop off on this one or keep going up?
I guess I'll, I'll hop out. So I gonna keep going? No, I stopped. Okay. It's kind of like we're back in that building we started in. Okay. Um... Oh, there's the thing we threw our body in, and then we teleport out above. Is that how it's going to end as we, like, float out above all this? What a... What a game. What a message. You know, the way we can interpret a thing can be so far off, especially outside of context. That's why I always get nervous when people... Try to say very important things through text messages and emails for that matter because the way it can be read and the way it was thought can be two totally different interpretations and in a very bad way sometimes and you know i i've always said that if you got something important to say either do it face to face or do it with a phone call so they can at least hear your voice Because there's a lot that can be misinterpreted just through words. Yo. My goodness. Absolutely amazing. Talk about feeling small. Turn back. For R. Turn back from this cave. You said, let me prove. This project would not have been possible without the following individuals. I wonder if R is the person that was making, like, Coda. I wonder if that was maybe his code name or her code name was R. Wow. I did not expect so much emotion from that. if anything else happens here. And there it is. The Beginner's Guide. Wow. I mean, I'll be honest, that's like, that borderline got me to tear up. Just the, the way it's like, It's like you feel this journey. It's like you're feeling two journeys at the same time. You're experiencing the journey of the games and the developer that was making these. Coda's work. You're experiencing that and seeing his growth. And I'll keep saying he. I don't, I don't mean to make it like only guys program anything. It's just, I don't know, Coda feels like a guy's name to me. But that's the only reason I keep saying that. But... You, you, you're, you're experiencing his journey as a code developer. And then you're hearing the journey of the narrator and how the common ground between both of them is the games that they're playing. But 
it's like they're both reading an entirely different message. And, you know, that can go for any time we play games. You know, developers on, on one side, they, they put all this blood, sweat, and tears, and there's, there's so many people involved in making what they think is going to be a fantastic experience. And literally, their, their drive is just to bring joy to people, whether it's a, it's a comedy, an action game, mystery, horror game, it doesn't matter what it is, but their ultimate goal is to, to create something that people, they, they want to experience it, and when they do, they, they remember it, and there's something special about it. But then we as the gamers sometimes on this side can be so critical. And so, like, what were they thinking when they did this, or why did they do that? And, and begin to tear down just what was a passion project. Now, I'm not going to say that every game out there is a passion project. There's definitely some that become cash grabs. But even at those times, it's like, was it the developer's goal to make it a cash grab? Or was there an outside influence saying, hey, we need you to put more cash options in this thing so we can make more money? And it kind of destroys what they were hoping to build to begin with. But in this game, it's like you're seeing two best friends on the same journey and there's a divide that's growing further and further between them as they continue to go. And it's, it's, it's mind boggling. The way this ends, it feels like it was a friendship that was never restored. A friendship that would never be mended. Wow. That was amazing. And like so many games that, you guys have recommended to me in in this channel so far it is one that will stick with me and i will remember for a long time it might even make sure i continue to keep a positive perspective on games it's not to say that i have to enjoy every game that i play it's not to say that i won't have some games that i play and i'm like i don't like it i want to keep in perspective that when you play a game even if you don't like it you got to remember what the developer's intentions were what they wanted it to be, not what you think it should be or what you uh, thought the intent. Now, it's different. I will say this. It's different if they come out and mislead a project. Easiest one I can think of is Anthem. I feel like that's a really good example of developers that probably got a little too ambitious, but then the, the developers or the, the team that was behind them or the marketers or whoever, I mean, there's a lot of drama behind that game. If you ever researched it, it's amazing to hear the story behind all of that. But it's one of those things where they over-promised and they said they were going to deliver all these things and then they under-delivered big time to the point where it was borderline false advertisement. And that's different. That's, that's totally different. That's not what I'm saying. I feel like I'm rambling at this point. I think I've gotten my point across, but this was amazing. I hope you guys enjoyed it. Uh, if you have played it before, let me know what your thoughts were in the bottom. What kind of emotions did you get from it? Uh, what feel did you get from this game? And which, out of all the little segments in the games that were in this, which one was your favorite? If I had to pick, I would definitely say the stuff that was near the beginning, I enjoyed far more than the more polished stuff that was later on. It's kind of weird to say that, but I enjoyed the, the innocence of the beginning part. You really did feel like it was just somebody experimenting and kind of getting to learn things. I think that moment when you jump in the beam and you go wide, above and you start to see everything, I think that was probably the most shocking moment and cool moment in the game. I loved it. I hope you guys loved it too. Until next time, continue to be safe out there. I'll see you on the next one.